So this is the most interesting wine store. Dom Perignon, Comte de Champagne, Krug. Wow. It's a liquor store, but there are so many fine wines. Is it our wine cellar? Yep. Okay, thank you, I take it. I just bought a bottle of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild 2014 in a liquor store. <laughs> Usually liquor store doesn't sell this kind of fine wine, high-end wine. And this is my first time to buy this kind of really high-end wine in a liquor store. My wife asked me if this isn't a fake one. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Once you taste this, then we'll get to know <laughs> in a liquor store. So this one looks like a usual office. Do you have only fine wines here? Uh, we have most, yeah, mostly it's going to be uh, fine wines. It's going to be uh, cold wines. Yeah, Cheval Blanc. Yeah, it's going to be Bordeaux and uh, Burgundies. And then we have some Italians. Like and uh, where was the Chateau Brion that I took? Oh, uh, nice. it, yeah, right here. There. We have all the Havrians here. Oh, okay. All the Aubryons. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Can I do a short interview with you? Yeah, sure. From where do you source your wine? Uh, we get it from collections or we get it from auction uh, or just retailers, wholesalers, uh -huh. wherever we can. And for high-end wines, the cellaring condition is very important, isn't it? Yes. So how do you keep these wines? Uh, we temperature control our cellar and we make sure that we get them from good sources that have kept their wine well. And how do you check the original condition of the collectors, uh, uh, sellers? When we buy from a collector, it's usually a trusted collector and they usually have their wines in you know, good wine storage facilities and things like this. So this is another very interesting wine store. Actually, I heard that this is not a wine store. This is a wine warehouse. Hi, is this chapter four? Hi. Hi. Oh, you're, you're much taller than I expected. <laughs> All right, you're Scott. Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you, Scott. Me too. Thank you, you sir. Wine. This is mine. Yeah. Two bottles of wine. The Latour's from my personal collection. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I acquired them in 2005. Really? Yeah. So you kept these bottles for multiple years? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole time under uh, storage. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, think I appreciate you coming up this far. <laughs> no problem, thank you. This is Wally's. Fine wines and Puma Foods. Our thing like our Bordeaux verticals, multiple vintages of Burgundy, Champagne, we can just flesh it out a bit more. It is the other bottle you asked about, uh -huh. which is the 2012. Now the beauty of 2012 vintage is that the wines are gonna come around earlier. 2012s were drinking beautifully a couple years ago and they're only getting better. And that's the reason why I chose this one because I'm not that patient. <laughs> <laughs> Most wine lovers aren't. <laughs> no. Unless you have multiple bottles. Then yeah, exactly. you can be patient with some, impatient with others. Yeah, exactly. You and know we the also answer. asked, I believe, about a 2014 Obreon. Uh -huh. Here we are, the gorgeous Obreon. Uh-huh. And then from where do you source this kind of high-end wine? So we work with multiple negotiants in Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. So our Bordeaux wines come directly from them. Uh, occasionally, if we have a private collector who has a good relationship with Wally's over decades, uh -huh. and we know that the provenance of the wines is perfect, we'll acquire wines from them as well. That way we're allowed to have so many different vintages. Lots of viewers are worried about fake bottles. So. And it is a huge issue. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, Wally's has never, you know, purchased wine from people who we don't have long-standing relationships with. And how do you maintain the the cellar in condition? So we have uh, two temperature-controlled uh, fans in here that keep it at 55 degrees, uh -huh. optimal age for aging wine. 
Um, and because the room is so big and there's so much precious cargo, there are backup generators for both so that no matter what, the room will always be at a constant 55 degrees. What is the oldest bottle that you have here? Oh, I can show you where that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's kept secret. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I believe I tucked it away in this area. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready for it. That's the vintage. Oh, okay. It's Madeira. 1868. 1868. Whoa. Fortified wines are eternal. That is true. You know all the bottles that you have here. Somebody has to. <laughs> all right, that is true. <laughs> Somebody has to. And that way, if you remember where you put everything, nobody can sell it except you. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you should be hired eternally, right? <laughs> I am. Over here we have our large format bottles for anyone who's having a party or is feeling extra thirsty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> extra thirsty. <laughs> and I see you have a restaurant here, right? Yes, we do. So Wally's, uh, ever since we opened Beverly Hills, has been a retail restaurant concept. Uh -huh. And the idea is that you can buy bottles to take home and all of our pricing is retail, so it's super fair. Uh -huh. You're also allowed to choose a bottle off our wine list and drink it here. And we avoid restaurant markup, which can be crazy on wines, as you know. An Obreon, for example, that might cost you six or seven hundred dollars on the shelf, uh -huh. will end up costing you two thousand on a wine list. Yeah, exactly. And the way we avoid that is any bottle you drink in the restaurant is forty dollars more, mm -hmm. regardless of what it is or how much it costs. So we are gonna taste five different wines today. Red wines, no white wine for today. <laughs> These five different red wines are from two different vintages, and they are from one bigger area, one larger area. Okay. The small areas, appellations, okay. can be the same or okay. can be different. Okay. So five red wines, two different vintages, mm -hmm. one large area for them all. Mm -hmm. Sub areas may or may not be the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> You're not going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> then I can do it alone. Okay. <laughs> As almost always, I don't know which one is which one. Okay. Either. And, and the corks have been changed. Yeah. Okay. Can we start? Yeah, of course. Okay. Let's have fun. Let's have some fun, exactly. Yeah. You think there's something wrong with the nose? Sorry? Did you say you thought there's some, something wrong with the nose? Wasn't that sure? You mean cork? Yeah. I don't pick it up on the nose. No. Uh, I find the wine, like number one, uh -huh. slightly reduced. Uh huh. Not corky, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. For sure, they're all from the same region, but I'm struggling. <laughs> You're struggling? Yeah. <laughs> then our viewers love it. They love it when I struggle. Okay? Yeah, I would love it too. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you struggling? Because the region is sort of identifiable, but then the wines are not. They got colors that I don't expect. You know, they've all got extract, for example. And there's one or two really good wines in here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, shall we talk about the number one? Shall we perhaps talk about the region? First? Region. Because you said they're all from one region and yeah. in sub-zones. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, getting into the wines, mm -hmm. they were not new world. Mm -hmm. They were all old world. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So that's old world wines. So then I'm having a look at wines like this, they're quite austere. Uh -huh. My immediate sense of all the wines was to go to Tuscany. Uh -huh. That was my immediate sense. Uh -huh. But the colors were wrong and the extracts were wrong. Colors were too red. Too red. And so I'm trying to think where else could these be because it looks to me, it feels to me like Tuscany uh -huh. uh, or Bordeaux. Definitely in some of these wines here, there's Bordeaux varieties for me. Okay. Okay. So you are hesitating between super Tuscan? I'm hesitating Tuscan? between Tuscany, with some super Tuscans involved, uh -huh. and Bordeaux. I see. As I say, the, it, it was difficult for me, because, uh -huh. but, but at least I'm, 
partially there. Yeah, you're right about grape varieties. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The first term you mentioned was austere. Austere. Yeah. There's not an upfront new world kind of in your face fruitiness. Rip off all your clothes and boogie on the first date. It's more restrained, austere, you have to woo me. The serious ones. What is that boogie? Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a funny word, you can use it to describe a lot of things. Oh, okay. right, I see. And by the way, the one that I like the best is the last one. Yeah? yeah. All right. So, shall we talk about the wine number one? Okay. Some age, but not a lot of age. There was a, a, an austere vintage, like 2014. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, austere vintage? When you say austere uh, for... 14, for example, uh -huh. was a cool vintage. Mm -hmm. So you had to be very careful in Bordeaux in 14 when making the wines, not to over oak them because the fruit was very delicate. I see. Only one of these wines did I actually find quite a lot of oak. Uh -huh. The wines were well made from that perspective. Even the one that had quite a lot of oak was well made. Uh -huh. There's no bad wine making here, except that I think two or three of the wines are quite reduced. Uh -huh. Meaning they could use some oxygen. Okay. okay. So I thought that this wine, this was not my favorite wine by any means, quite austere, still tasting reduced, mm -hmm. decent. Decent? Decent, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? It's decent, it's pure. I taste some oak, but it's integrated well. The tannin is fine. Yeah, no, all of the wines had decent mouthfeel, uh -huh. uh, decently, they, they were very tannic, some of them, but yeah. decently integrated tannins and not rough tannins. Uh -huh. So that makes it difficult to taste because uh, they all show... They're all very similar. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They show their Bordeaux heritage. All right. There's no Petrus in here. <laughs> there is no Petrus. Peter, <laughs> no Petrus. <laughs> I keep, I keep tasting. I live in hope, but there's no Petrus in here. <laughs> hope is really good when you have it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll have to serve you La Fito La Tour later. Okay, why not? Why not? <laughs> You'll be welcomed by me. <laughs> <laughs> and me, and me. But I'll divorce my wife if she opens one, but... <laughs> All right. Then I can host you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Divorce is not the problem. It's where to sleep. <laughs> it's a good time to divorce me. I have no money. <laughs> we're terrible. <laughs> so number one, it's an okay wine? All of them were decent. Mm -hmm. um, my number one was my least favorite. I see. Yeah. All right. Then wine number two? Wine number two was better. I don't think the vintages are very far apart. No, you're correct. So it's very difficult to tell. Mm -hmm. What I'm noticing as I retaste the wines is that they're improving, mm -hmm. which is typical of young Bordeaux, mm -hmm. which is not cheap, 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 mm -hmm. is that they're improving. And these, all these wines are actually improving in the glass. They're getting better. It's not full body. Mm -hmm. It's still uh, medium bodied, but it's quite plump. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice. Uh, again, Left bank. For me, the second wine was the oakiest. The oakiest, the yeah. number two. One of them I picked up oak on the nose. The immediate oak on the nose was number four. Number four. Yeah. Nice wine. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are Cabernet dominated, and some of them to me have less Cabernet. Okay, to them. I see. Certainly this, this one. This one. Also oaky. Yeah. The last one. Anyway, carrying on. So, did we finish talking about number two? I'm not sure about that. Did we talk <laughs> about the did taste? Did you talk about it? <laughs> I was saying number two was quite oaky for me. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. A little bit green at the same time, but I like the freshness. Yeah, it's fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, that greenness is hard. I mean, everybody tells you that greenness comes from Cabernet. That greenness also comes from Merlot. All right. Then number three? Number three. This yeah. one was very much like number one. Number one. In that it was re it's reduced. It's quite complex. It's not a bad wine at all. Mm -hmm. But I think it will go very well with food. With uh, the barbecue that you are going oh, to... We're about to do barbecue, are we? <laughs> we'll go great with that. All right. Yeah. You said there are two vintages here. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be at the point now of, of saying what the vintages are. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay. 12 uh -huh. and 14. 
12 was a better vintage than 14. Mm -hmm. Neither of them were as rich as 15. Wine number one and wine number three, they are reduced, right? Uh, they are reduced. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you think uh, they can get better once they get yes. aerated? Yes. Yeah? One, number one, definitely. Okay. How can you say it? Because of the way it's developing in the glass. Remember I said that the wines were quiet and now they're developing. It's still there, mm -hmm. the reduction. It's still ungenerous. Did you think number three was corked? Is that the one you thought was corked? Which was the one you thought had uh, number three? Number three? Yeah. I get it now. Yeah? Very slight TCA. I don't get it this minute, but yeah, it, again, that's a, it's a very slight, like last week's. It's uh, much lighter than that one. Even last, lighter than last yeah. week's. I, I get it now. But in the palate? No. I just feel lots of fruit, full of fruit. It's a pity about TCA yeah. because it's a good wine. Mm -hmm. But in the palate, it's as fruity as the others. That's a good wine. Uh, unfortunately, not in great shape. I'm going to go with 12. Okay. And what do you think about the taste of uh, number three? Oh, I have to taste it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's balanced, it's round, it's claret, okay? It's not heavy, it's medium bodied, it's harmonious, mm -hmm. quite complex, mm -hmm. nuanced. It's the essence of old world wine with nuances versus in your face. The tannin of the left bank is there. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's really balanced and the tannin is velvety. On the nose, I was thinking it was corked slightly. But I think it is. Yeah, but in the palate, the fruitiness. Fruit's still there. Yeah. So it's an interesting wine in that it can overcome the TCA to display that kind of fruit. But that TCA is very mild. Very, very mild. Very, very mild. <laughs> I didn't get it the first time and then I wasn't thinking when I picked it up now. Uh -huh. It was there. Then now I'm trying to find it's gone again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, that mm. was the one I found oaky. This was the oakiest one on the nose. Uh -huh. Palette, it's very well integrated. Okay. I wanted to go right bank here, but I'm going left bank here. Okay. The tannins are very powerful. They're really well done, but they're very powerful. This is powerful, but at the same time, it's very subtle. Too. So, yeah. that's the essence of Bordeaux when you get it right. There's a reason why Bordeaux is arguably the most famous wine in the world. Mm -hmm. Number one is because they produce so much of it, and number two is because so much of it is so good. It's the ability of these Bordeaux varieties to deliver the iron fist in the velvet glove. Power punch from Cabernet Sauvignon, and then nuance, subtle. You know? <laughs> very good wine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it very much too. Yeah. I like it. Okay, then wine number five. Wine number five. At the time when I first tasted it, I thought it was the best wine. It's extremely complex. Extremely complex? Yeah. It's absolutely my kind of wine, but not my kind of Bordeaux. What do you mean by that? I expect more fruit, more this, more that, more the other from Bordeaux, rougher tannins. And obviously, I expect quality, class, but I don't expect that kind of subtlety. Uh -huh. The wine is so subtle. I love this wine. This, this wine is like this is me, my kind of wine. But it's definitely not now anymore if you're in Bordeaux, the best wine. Uh -huh. Because the Bordeaux characteristics are, are really not here. Mm -hmm. um, except for the color. I love the wine. Yeah, me I too. love the wine. <laughs> this is the most minerally wine for mm -hmm. me. This is gorgeous stuff. Merlot dominated. Uh -huh. It is the best wine in the tasting. But it's not the wine that I believe that would be the most popular amongst our subscribers. Uh -huh. Not because I'm telling you guys you don't know the best wine. Uh -huh. that, that's not what I'm trying to say. It's very subtle. It plays to the side of me that mm. I don't like to talk about, mm. which is my own personal preferences. Because my own personal preferences are irrelevant. Mm -hmm. What's relevant is the wines. Mm -hmm. So I often say when we do these things that I'm trying to give you guys a sense of quality. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not is actually irrelevant in terms of everything else because that comes down to personal preference and your personal preference is absolutely as valid as mine. Yeah. So, I can't say any more without crying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some more number without five? Without weeping, later. Uh, later? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, when I think about wine, what am I looking for in wine? Okay? 
that's the kind of thing I look for. And what do you think would be the most popular wines by the majority of our viewers? Uh -huh. Number four. Number four. Yeah. It's very fruity compared to the others. Mm -hmm. As wines go, it's very subtle fruit. But powerful fruit, well balanced, youthful. I think number four. Well, and right. they wouldn't be wrong from my perspective. Uh huh. Because it's very, very good wine. So there is one more information now. Okay. They're all from the left bank. That's fair enough. They're the from bank. three diff different appellations. You know, I don't have enough wine anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know. So there's Margot, uh, the Grave, and then maybe Poyac. What's yeah. the other one? Poyac. Poyac. I would say the last one is a Grave. Uh -huh. How is the wine from Grave? If you have a look at the first growths, uh -huh. Chateau Aubryon is the first growth from Grave. For a lot of people, Chateau Aubryon is the least of the great growths, the first growths. Uh -huh. For me, it's very often number one. Uh -huh. There's a subtlety and nuance, a complexity, a quietness about the Grave that I love. So, Aubryon, which is often considered number five out of the five, for me is number one or two, very, very often. I see. Uh, so that's a personal thing, it's got nothing to do with what we're trying to uh -huh. tell our subscribers. Do you want to see the bottles? Sure, absolutely. Okay, then wine number one. So... Chateau Latour. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm pretty serious wow. with you. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that because it was my least favorite wine. Uh -huh. So right, you cannot like all of them. 2012. Obviously, I'm going to drink this. And yeah, of course. And not spill it out. Okay, no, no, no. no. Yeah. Do you love it? What I loved were number four and number five. Okay. Yeah, number three was good too. And number one and number two were my least favorite. My, me too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for <laughs> such a great wine. Okay, <laughs> no I'll, I'll let you off for the Petrus. All right. <laughs> and number two? Okay. Shall we see? Absolutely. Okay, ta -da -ta -da. number two. It's uh, Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Chateau Mouton Rothschild. 2012. That's Aubryon, right? I'm not I, I have no idea, Peter. <laughs> I told you, it, okay. I don't know which one is which one, but I think you're right. Then number three? Number three? Well, yep. we thought there was some TCA here. Mm -hmm. All right. Clearly, there's a reason why there's five. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely corked. You need to take that back. Because it might well be the most complete wine here. Mm -hmm. Except for that. Right. So number three. Chateau Margot. Margot. Yeah. So interesting. I was expecting bigger nose from Margot. 2012. 2012. You know, that's the problem with the wine being cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, 2014. You were very smart to do this. Generally speaking, in the great vintages, Lafitte is too powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. So in, in the lesser vintages, Lafitte shows very often better than the others. Otherwise, it can sometimes be in the great vintages a little clumsy. <laughs> and Aubryon, I love the fact that the, my one that I loved the best was Aubryon because are you sure? It can be something else. <laughs> uh, well, maybe it can be something else, but I think I know the theme already. <laughs> All right, wine number five. Yeah, Chateau Brion. 14. 2014. Amazing. Beautiful wine. Yeah, it's beautiful. Jay, yep. what an awesome tasting. Uh -huh. I'm sorry I didn't love the wines more. No problem. We have uh, plenty of time to enjoy them. We do. These are wines made for long, long, long aging. And mm -hmm. so you don't get the immediate characteristics of Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. For sure, the Bordeaux varieties, but not Bordeaux itself. I'm going to get very drunk tonight and very crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I asked you for grilling some meat and uh, staying at your home. But we, sh we should do our ending. Oh, well, of <laughs> All right, so we tasted five Bordeaux Premier Grand Cru wines in Asia. We call these five wines 
five great chateaux. But you don't say that kind of thing here in the United States. First growth. First growth. In the United States and in most of the world, first growth. I really tried to find the same vintages, but it was not possible. So I tried to find some balance between the vintages in these wines. Joe, yeah, that's a fascinating tasting and an interesting experience for me because these are very young in the context of great wine. You remember I said earlier that I didn't think they were spectacular mm -hmm. and then oh they're growing in the glass oh they're getting better in the glass and that's what you expect from great wine each one of these wines thousand euro bottle of wine so i don't know who's paying for this i hope it's not me <laughs> it's me <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> right. probably in the whole world nobody drank these five wines together tonight oh uh, yeah and as you can see, each bottle is at least half full. It's just Jay and me left and we're going to drink the whole lot. Yeah. None of the stuff gets poured away. <laughs> I'll drink the Aubryon Me first. too. Jay, awesome, awesome tasting. And as you said, because uh, they are not totally open, I prepared five clean new decanters to decant all of them. Now? Yeah. So not here, in my car. Oh, in your car, okay. Yeah. I'm sneaky. Why are you waiting? <laughs> because my wife is driving my car now. <laughs> the man who buys bottles that cost over a thousand dollars each lets his wife drive his car. Explain that to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Peter. We are gonna en enjoy these wines. With oh yeah, I got plenty more for you to taste. So don't. don't. <laughs> yes, we are going to drink everything. Here. Yeah, All right. Let, let me just go and tell Valerie what we have open. Yeah, of course. And then I, I want you to taste two wines, okay? All right. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And leave a love. And leave a love. <laughs> no, 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 I have to toast you with Aubryon. All right. Aubryon is again for me. All right. <laughs> Better than the others. And this is the 14. Uh, Subtlety. Yeah. Nuance. Complexity. I prefer complexity to power. That's me too. I totally agree. <laughs> Go, drink. <laughs> Do that again. Right. So, I will be drinking Aubryon till it's gone. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Valerie. So crazy wines. <laughs> crazy wines. Do you want to drink too? Which one was your best? Was your favorite? Mine is, my favorite is number five. And Peter's favorite is number five too. The second best was number four for me. Okay. They're quite soft. Yeah, very soft. You don't get that. Mm. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. At all. Uh, not at all. Are. Yeah. They're delicious. We are going to finish all these five bottles. Peter said he would get drunk. <laughs> Decanting time! <laughs> <laughs> Valerie thinks I'm crazy. They can be used for young ones and also for old ones. You may remember that we used to do the Borovorsky for the main meal, remember? Yeah. Just to give us something to get going on. Well, here we go. Of course! <laughs> that is my favorite sausage. This is to eat in the bush while you're watching elephants. <laughs> Sounds strange, but it is true. It's true. <laughs> So now I'm going to make Valerie crazy, but Vors goes really well with eggs. Okay. Would you like some eggs? Why not? So we'll start with the Vors, then have some, and have Vors and eggs, and then we'll have the... Valerie, we're going to ask you to cook an eggs. <laughs> no, you... it's okay. What can I say? I apologize, I, but... I, I, I can't help it that I've got crazy people. <laughs> Crazy people, not yeah, normal. right. People who drive to Santa Barbara to buy wine. Uh -huh. It's not normal. <laughs> these wines, these first growth Bordeaux, are pretty young to drink now. I'll decant all five of them in the same shape decanters to give the fair chances to the wines. So as they evolve, we'll see how they evolve. That's uh, the second one was what? Maga? Second one was uh, oh, Mouton Rochelle. Mouton Rochelle. While I'm waiting for you, I'll pour myself some Aubrey. No problem, Peter. 
I can't believe in this lineup that I would pick Aubryon 14 to be the best one. Uh, that is a difficult vintage. There's my wife's favorite wine too. Chateau the Brion. last one? Yeah. Aubryon. While I pour the wine into decanter, I see through the neck of the bottle if there is sediment uh, being poured into the decanter. Once I find any sediment, I just stop pouring. We can enjoy pure wine. Aubryon. So you've always had these decanters or you had to go out and buy them? They are all new. All new, okay. All new. Beautiful decanters. Yeah. They are valid for young wines and also for old wines. And now, five bigger glasses. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. There you go. That's yeah. Good stuff. But I didn't want to taste with these glasses because they Because you're not tuned into them. No. Yeah. H. Brion. 14. All right. I love this pen. I love that pen too. Yeah. I prefer the wine. <laughs> Dip this back in there. Beautiful sound. And when you've got wines at this level, which are relatively young, they just get better and better in the glass. I thought about doing double decanting, but I wanted to see the evolution yeah i think you're right yeah from the beginning of the evolution because we were gonna enjoy them for a we long are time still going to. yeah <laughs> we are going to fall into bed but we are still going to <laughs> <laughs> love the plan <laughs> i planned this tasting already from the end of last year oh wow yeah <laughs> okay, we'll start with that. All right. So. Take as much as you want because we have really a lot. Looks delicious. Cheers. Cheers. That's what they do in France all the time barbecue and first class. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. With barbecue, I really love La Tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.